Hello ladies and gentlemen, it is Believe in Bruce, the channel where we help you get inside your head so you can think, feel and act that little bit better. So it's Nelly Fight Week, UFC 246, Conor McGregor versus Donald Cowboy Cerrone. Now if you like body language, psychology, performance, mental health, well-being, basically what goes on in the head and heart, you've come to the right channel. Subscribe, subscribe now, give us a thumbs up, but leave your comments below. That's more, but I want to hear your opinions, do you disagree, do you agree with me? What Whatever. All opinions are welcome at the Believe in Bruce channel. Alright, so, the return of the Mac. He is making his comeback in less than a couple of weeks now. Yeah, we've been waiting for I'm a big fight fan. Yes, I do. Psychology and mental health and well-being and all the stuff that I love and I'm passionate about. But one thing for me that I'm also passionate about is fighting. I am an out-and-out -out fight fan. I like tennis, don't like golf, don't like football. Just as well because I'm from Newcastle. But I love fighting. Boxing and MMA, that is my thing. And I think it's great that Conor McGregor is coming back. And I also think it's a very intrigue and fight there's a lot of opinions you know is it going to be the walkover that people think is cowboy cerrone going to provide a difficult challenge for conor mcgregor maybe to step too far it's at 170 oh my god what's happening up at 170 there is more conspiracy theories than area 51 but something that i would love to talk about on this video which i'm going to do because it's my channel is i'm going to talk about the mental game this side of the game that people feel you know it's really relevant but we don't understand explore or talk about enough so we focus on the running on the spot and on the pad work on all this type of stuff yeah which is important but the mental side the mental side which is why I believe when Bruce comes into it is often forgotten about and it's the mental game that Connor plays that I want to explore it's the mental stuff that he does that sometimes it doesn't get the the, the plaudits that it should it doesn't get the focus that it should it doesn't get the, the the round of applause that it should because it's not just when he steps in the octagon that kind of does his business it starts even before the fight is announced and one of the examples that i'm going to show you in a little bit is you know conor mcgregor versus he wasn't even fighting cowboy and he was still manipulating that situation he was still controlling that situation by playing mcgregor's mental game and what i see conor doing the tricks that he uses the mental strategy that he deployed the mental warfare approach that he delivers, that he, you know, sprays down on his opponent, reminds me a lot of my favourite ever fighter, which was Mike Tyson. This seek and destroy mentality of Mike Tyson was superbly supported by a foundation based on fear and intimidation before the fight. It's pure brute strength and intimidation. Most guys were yet, um, pretty much intimidated. They lost the fight before they even got hit, most guys. I knew the, I knew the um, artist got doggery. It's such an important part, and I'm going to explain why intimidation, why fear, why frustration, and all this type of thing that Conor McGregor, you know, plays beautifully against his opponents can help him to win the fight, or can at least give him an upper edge. It gives him that extra step that he may not have had. It's not to say that he's going to win the fight, but it's definitely advantageous. It definitely plays a part in it to allow Connor the best chance of success. An obsession and a conviction to win at all costs. That's why he is where he is. Now, people focus on that. Oh, he's only got that left hand. I know that's been coming from Cerrone's camp and Chael Sonnen spoke about that. as The mental punches, if you will, the mental kicks that he lands before the fight that has already done damage. What I'm going to do is going to go through a few examples of what Conor does, what impact it has on the psychological state, how that impacts on the physiological state, and how that can be detrimental to their opponents, but also what Cowboy Cerrone, what simple tactic Cowboy Cerrone could do to negate Connor's advantageous approaches to that mental state, that mental warfare, that I, as far as I'm aware, not one opponent has even attempted to do, but it was, it, it was within all the gifts. It was within all the gifts to do so. And one thing what I want to talk about today is an amygdala hijack. An amygdala hijack, Google it, research it. This is what Connor does really, really well by his verbal actions, by his body. And we're going to talk about what is an amygdala hijack, part of the brain, what effects does it cause, what kind of does to cause that, but also how it can be negated. So the amygdala, all right, it's part of the limbic system. You've got the hypothalamus, you've got the thalamus, you've got the hippocampus, you've got the amygdala. So the part of it is a central core, if you will, yeah, where we detect fear, all right, where we detect fear. And an amygdala hijack is where the amygdala takes control. This is the key takes control of the cortex. So the cortex is part of the body that, you know, reason and logic, etc. you know, when we are normal, let's just call it that, generally in our day-to-day -day life. But what happens is that the thalamus, which receives incoming stimuli, data, information, what we look at, 
Okay, so it comes in, the thalamus process, and it sends it to the cortex or the amygdala. If the amygdala determines that it's a threat, if there's danger, that takes control. It bypasses the cortex, so we start to fear things. We start to react. You've probably heard the terminology, fight or flight. Yeah, this is down to the amygdala. This is this little bad boy's job. But what happens when the amygdala fires is we get surges of adrenaline. Increased heart rate, increased breathing, increased blood pressure. It also affects our short-term memory. It affects our ability to function, if you will. It's like if you've been texting somebody and you shouldn't have, and you're lying in the bath, and then boom, the door flies off the handle and your partner stand there with the phone, with the evidence. Who have you been texting? That's the amygdala. It will bypass that cortex. It will take over. But what it is, it stresses the body. Yeah, it stresses the body. And what we've got is adrenal spikes, if you will. Yeah. So every time Connor does something to his opponents that frustrates them, I'm not saying his opponents are scared, but if it frustrates, if they're scared of the environment, if they are ultra aware of the arena that they're coming into or the pressure except them, what we get is these adrenaline spikes, these adrenaline, boom, 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 all happening at the same time. The more he spikes his opponents, the more frustrated they get, they could get fatigued, they could get anxious, it could go either way, but what it is, he's having a detrimental effect on their ability to be present in the moment and perform in the octagon, at least by the time they get to the octagon. In Connor's brilliant, it fury, you know, frustrate his opponents, he'll say things, he'll put it directly in their face. Chael Sonnen as well is another example. Chael is a great orator, but a lot of the stuff he says is fair play, so when he actually points out the weaknesses, he's already delivered it on a bed of truth, which makes the, you know, the sting and barb even harder to take. Uh, Tony Bellew was great as well. Tony Bellew was very, very, very knowledgeable at the game, and I always found Tony Bellew really balanced and fair. So he would point out what was great, but then when he hit you with what you were not so great at, you had, it, it, it stung somewhere because you knew the guy was telling the truth. So when, you know, when we used to live in caves, it was the saber-toothed tiger that would put a spike up, and that you know that would get our senses for the opponent there's no saber tooth tiger it's connor there's no zulus coming over the ridge it's connor there's no more missiles from donald trump or Cerrone. it's connor so what we've got is where connor directly speaks to people and he, he's not bothered about what they say we've got a brilliant example here where connor is in rio de janeiro i think doing the press conference aldo's there you know the home down hero and he's like basically i do not respect you at all here's the video i own this town so this one, he's even gone to the extent of learning the language so he can say this message to him face to face. Now Aldo can't escape him, yeah, even when they're good in different vehicles. This is what you find Connor doing. All of this, all of these times, whether he wants to show it or not, because Aldo is a fighter. It's spiking up, oh, you know, frustration, frustration, anger, embarrassment, all of this type of stuff. But what he's doing, because remember, doesn't matter if you, <laughs> you can't not hear things. You can't not hear. But a lot of the time, Connor does is he utilizes this act of disruption, this verbalization, to force the environment where he's controlling his opponent's mind. Because they're not saying anything back. Because they're not saying anything back, Connor is given free reign to say what he wants. So whether they smile or joke, that will rankle inside them. It will give these adrenal spikes. They will be having tiny amygdala hijacks because he's frustrating them. He's making them furious. He's making them embarrassed. They, you know, the action because they can't get their hands on him as well. That's another frustration thing. All of these things. Ding, 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 ding. And that's where we generate the Hulk response. When the Hulk comes out, when the Hulk is in charge of those adrenal glands, yeah, when we have it in amygdala hijack, that's not a great position to be in from a controlled, logic, smooth, you know, fluid position that you need to be when you're fighting. There's another example of this active disruption with Cowboy himself, the very man who he's fighting now. Now, I'm sure you all remember, or, you know, if you're, if you're UFC fans like myself, there was a press conference a little while ago when uh, McGregor was fighting Aldo and McGregor come up with, you know, hey, it's red panty night when you fight me, which is quite truthful to be fair and we'll come to that in a little bit. But Cerrone was sitting right behind him. Yes, yeah, Cerrone was sitting right behind him. And I'm gonna show you a little clip here and I want you to see if you can identify what Connor does to Cerrone so he takes control of that situation. Come. Uh, yeah, I'll... It's red panty night when you decide to find me, yeah? Back at your back at home with your wife. It's a celebration. 
Connor, Connor has no right coming up to 55. There's no way he's not going to stand a chance. We're too big for him. We're too strong. So you can take your little English ass and get on. You're too slow and too stiff. You're stiff as a board. I'd snap you in half. And, and that's it. So can you see what he's doing? He does not give a monkeys that Cerrone wants to speak. He is speaking over him. Yeah, he's speaking over him. Keep watching. Yes. I see stiffness when I look in that 155 pound division. Slow, stiff. I feel like they're stuck in the mud almost. The featherweights, they hit like flyweights. So it's nice down there just destroying them and killing that whole division. But I have my eye on that 155 division and I see them all stuck in the mud in there. So... Connor, we'll see, we'll see over time, but guess what? Have I been wrong yet? Have I been wrong yet? No. You have a monster right here at 45, Auto about to beat your ass. You beat nobody, and you think you're going to come with 155 make a statement? Come on, man. Sit the fuck down. Yeehaw! So you see there, all right? So when Cerrone wants to speak, McGregor speaks over him. And you see the actual reverse happening is that when McGregor is speaking, Cerrone shuts up. He's actually waiting for McGregor to finish, which is, which is the one thing you could do to disrupt Conor McGregor's ability to control you, your mind, your frustration, etc. So, one of the things that any opponent of Conor McGregor could do, and it's very simple, you've just got to have that control of your inner thought to do something, maybe he's up your sleeve, to say, is that you speak over him. Yeah, you speak over him. You say something that embarrasses his thought patterns. Yeah, that takes away his ability to control that situation. The only time I've seen it done was when um, McGregor was against uh, Uriah Faber in the, uh, the Ultimate Fighter. And obviously McGregor was controlling it. Uriah Faber, quite a funny guy, he said something, but McGregor said something, and then Uriah Faber controlled that situation by saying McGregor's only grown a beard because he's got acne. That was the only time I've seen McGregor shut up because he knew uh, uh, Uriah Faber had scored that moral, he'd, he'd actually embarrassed him. He'd hit something raw within McGregor. Every other time he's in control of that situation, but that's the only time I've ever, and I'm not saying that's the only time, it's the only time I've ever seen where McGregor has been beat verbally by somebody else. So act of disruption, and try it yourself. Have you ever tried to talk and then somebody talks over you and you feel yourself getting frustrated? You feel that anger, that Hulk <laughs> coming up. That's what he deployed. It's a very simple yet high, hugely powerful technique to frustrate their opponents and also spike those amygdala hijacks. Even Conor McGregor's pressure, his stance, you know, he sort of comes out, oh, wrong way, because he's left-handed, he comes out, and he, he, he sort of moves like this, and th that hand's there. That's another thing, again, the faint, I'm not just saying McGregor, obviously all fighters faint, and they've got, I think, but that again causes the, those amygdala hijacks, oh, I need to move, because again, that amygdala, depending on the condition of the fighter, etc., could be picking up that threat, it bypasses the cortex and you start reacting. It's a bit like you've ever seen somebody sparring and they, they blatantly can't box. You know, the boxer will get them in the corner and they just hit them and the sort of person's wafting them away or just actually let them hit because they don't know what to do. The amygdala hijack. Also, another thing that causes the amygdala hijack is the McGregor effect. It is red panty night. Again, he speaks truthfully about this. It's like when you fight Conor McGregor, you've got, you know, it is a huge occasion. He's truthful when he says it's probably the biggest fight of your life, you're going to get the most money you've ever been paid, etc, etc. So there's huge pressure that he then piles onto the opponent. But also that tension that Cerrone is already bringing in, you know, he's had the press conference. That didn't go too well, let's just say Conor verbally beat him, if, you know, if, if we can say that. There's that frustration that comes in there, I want to show him, I want to show, I, I, I want to be the fighter that takes this kid to school and shuts him up for good. So he's bringing that frustration in. Will that, you know, will that fuel? Will it be a positive? Will it be a negative? We don't know. But there will be a reaction. There has to be a reaction. And also, when people are fighting McGregor, it's a bit like again, it's a psychological condition called the imposter syndrome. It's a bit like when you maybe get a new job or you think that you, you know, I've got to turn up like this or I must look like a boss. I must act like a boss. Or you know, you um, get a new partner. It's this. Or, well, I've got to be somebody else. Or you know, the way you talk to your family might be different to the way you talk to your work because you're not being the authentic version of yourself. Yourself. Again, when it comes to fighting McGregor, that imposter syndrome, shit, I'm fighting Conor McGregor. How should I be fought? I know the world is looking on me. Again, it's another psychological experiment called the Hawthorne. The Hawthorne effect. We are impacted by people watching, so we know that people watching us. The fighter knows that the whole world is watching, for example, Cerrone here. How will that impact the behaviours? Can they be authentic? Can they be true? We don't know, but all of this is in the pot in order 
that Conor McGregor may psychologically impact the performance of Cowboy Cerrone by getting into his head before the fight. But it's already happened just by Conor's natural gregarious nature. And what's gone before, he's already spiking Cerrone's amygdala. He's already creating those amygdala hijacks. So putting that all together then, active disruption. Ding, ding, ding. The verbal wins. Ding, ding, ding. The verbal sparring that results in embarrassment against the competitor. Ding, ding, ding. The truthful statement that's then followed up by a truthful bar. Ding, ding, ding. And the McGregor impact itself. Ding, ding, ding. And Aldo is a prime example. All of this bundled together. You've got the amygdala hijack. You've got the effect on the brain. You've got the effect on the performance from that hormone regulation. How that psychological state affects the physiological state and this is what happens. Well, this is what can happen and this is important to note. Just because McGregor wins the verbal war does not mean that it's going to transpose into the fight. No fight does that. There's no guarantee. What you are guaranteed is that it's annoyed that particular opponent at that particular time. It may have an impact, it may not. It worked brilliantly against Aldo, it worked brilliantly against Eddie Alvarez, not so well against Khabib. However, if you watch the Khabib press conference, I think Khabib was like, okay, I'm just gonna, I just wanna get through this and then it'll be fine. But as that press conference went on, Conor McGregor was saying and doing certain things. Ding, ding, ding. That was causing Khabib to get frustrated. That was causing Khabib to have these amygdala hijacks. Not through fear, but through frustration or even wanting to get at him or it was just like, okay, this is too much for me. Khabib would rather fight. He's a fighter. But McGregor controlled that situation. Regardless of whether he won the fight, an example of his mental warfare was there for all to see in the Khabib McGregor press conference. So please don't just tell me this guy has got a left hand. Yeah, I'm a big Connor fan. I'm also equally frustrated with Connor. You know, for the past few years he's done certain things. I'm like, oh, come on, brother. You know, you've got a chance to represent here. You've got a chance to actually do great on a global basis. You know, very, very unique and rare position that he's in. So as well as me being a big fan, I'm equally frustrated. Who do I want to win? I want Connor to win. Why do I want Conor to win? Because I'm a fight fan. <laughs> I'm a passionate and knowledgeable fight fan who loves fights. And if Cowboy, well, you know, Cowboy just didn't get me excited. I'm not saying that it wouldn't be great for Cowboy if he would. It'd be fantastic. But for me personally, as a passionate fight fan, I want Conor to win because I'm, you know, is he going to take on El Kikui next if if uh, Tony Ferguson wins? Is he going to take on Khabib? Will that happen? There's just more fights to, you know, that get me wet, if you will. That's probably not the right thing to say. That get me excited if Conor McGregor wins. Hopefully you've enjoyed what I've said today. You can see some, you know, a little bit more understanding about the mental game, but what also happens, if you want to deploy these techniques against someone who's annoying you or another competitor as well, or if you're on the receiving end of it, to just be aware of what's going on so you can try little things that will help you maybe get out of it or be more in control of your thoughts and feelings. So in the fight week, hopefully there's going to be a press conference where I'll do body language analysis. Uh, there is a couple of videos here. My KSI Logan Paul one doing really, really well. You can click this link. Or also my Anthony Joshua versus Ruiz. Again, if you're interested in body language, click on either of those and you'll be able to see what impact Conor McGregor is having on Cerrone within the press conference. So make sure you subscribe, join us at Instagram and Twitter, but most importantly, believe in Bruce, be kind to yourselves and each other.